So today we're going to go over indications, contraindications for a stair chair, and we're going to show you how to arrest a fall. Okay. So this is a very typical, standard, basic model of a stair chair. So it's got its vinyl, so this is easy to clean, it's OSHA um, compliant, so we're able to decontaminate it because we're going to use this multiple times. We have our five-inch wheels that we're going to be able to use to wheel the patient. And then we have our handles, which are going to extend. We have ones at the top and ones at the feet. Okay, this opens up. Okay, so we can see. This is our vinyl piece. We now have our, our straps at the top, straps at the bottom. Okay, this bar here, we always want to make sure is clear before we put um, our patient down. A lot of times patients will put their toes underneath, and we'll show you in a second with our, our live patient. So these handles, they come up. Anytime we're going to lift, we want good body mechanics. So I want to have this in between. I want a nice wide base. I want a secure back, nice and flat, tight abdominal muscles, close to my body. I don't want to be reaching because then I'm going to injure my lower back. So if we had a patient, I want to show you for demonstration purposes. Um, so if we're going to put somebody into the stair chair, this is where we do an extremity lift. It's appropriate as a pivot, whatever's going to be most recommended for and appropriate for our patient. So anytime we're going to do an intervention for a patient, we always want to make sure that we ask them, we get consent, and we inform them of what's going on. So we have you in the stair chair, we're going to have to carry you down the stairs. So we're going to need a couple buckles, just like seatbelts, to keep you secure. Okay. okay. And as much as you can, I want you to keep your hands inside. Don't reach out and try to grab anything. Okay. okay? Yep. Now when we go around, are you okay if we go under your arms or we you prefer us go over your arms? You go over my arms. Go over right your arms. Hopefully I won't reach out. All right. So then I'm going to feed the strap as much as I can so that I'm not manipulating. And I want to be really careful. If I have an elderly patient that has skin tear or something like that, I want to make sure that I've got something protective underneath. Lots of times we're going to use a blanket to wrap our patient up. It's going to help keep them warm. It's also going to help secure these arms so that they don't reach out and grab things. Um, and if we have patients that have been incontinent or urine or feces, it's going to help keep everything contained. So um, for demonstration purposes, we don't have them wrapped in the blanket, but that is one of the techniques that we often utilize. So this one here, we're going to come around and walk and go over her wrist. We're going to secure this, and I want to make sure that this is over the lap. I don't want this going over the abdominal wall. I don't want to compress any of those muscles. And I don't want to push anything up and impede the diaphragm and affect her breathing. All right, so yeah, if you can hold on to those. Okay. And then I'm going to check and sure that these are secure. I don't want them too tight, and I'm going to inform my patient. So these, I know they feel uncomfortable, but they shouldn't cause you any pain. Any nope. pain anywhere? Nope. Right no pain. Okay, great. So anytime that we're going to do this, we look at the management of our, of our patient. So the majority of the weight is going to be at the torso. Generally, the person who's taller um, or who's stronger may go to that torso side. The other person's gonna be at the feet. So for our demonstration purposes, that was gonna help me out. We're just gonna tilt her back so I can show you what she does with her feet. Anytime we're going to move, we're gonna have good communication. We're gonna make eye contact. Always gonna be on the headman's count. So I'm gonna get myself into position. Okay, ready? ready? I'm gonna tilt her back. One, two, three. Back. Now, you can see, this is very common, and this is what most people are going to do. They're going to take their toes, and they're going to put them under this bar. Now, if I were to just put her down, we very likely could injure those toes. If we have a, a diabetic patient, someone has necrotic toes, we could amputate those. So we always want to make sure that the feet are clear. So anytime you hear us saying, you know, the feet are clear, we'll, we want them up on the bar. Okay? So now we're in a position we're going to be able to lower her down. All right. One, two, three. Feet are clear. Down. She's on the ground. Okay. Always good communication, always talking about what it is that we're doing. Okay, so, you want to tip her back? Uh, rolling towards you. Sorry, you're almost there. Rolling. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Good means count. One, two, three, up. So, we're going to start to go down. Alice's toes are hitting the tread. He's kicking the stair. His foot is firm on that stair. I'm going to start to come down. We're both going to hug the wall. The most secure side, as I come down, my heels are gonna dig into the tread. We're gonna go nice and slow, there's no rush. You know, one more. Okay, so now we're in a position where if something were to happen to my partner, back goes out, knee goes out, they're having trouble breathing, chest pain, and they need to put this patient down, or my patient codes, uh, they stop breathing and we're gonna have to ventilate. We need to have a way to do this safely. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the, patient down so the wheels are going to come down I'm going to sit back and I'm going to lower this patient and I'm gonna have a nice wide base okay so the wheels are all the way back against the step I'm going to dig out these handles so that they're at a 90 degree angle and they're going to be secure into that tread now if these aren't all the way extended then they're not going to be secure so these are all the way out my patient is secure this chair is not going to go anywhere I've straddled my patient and now if my partner 
has been injured and needs to get out, as long as they can still stand and just prevent anything happening from our patient or this chair starting to go down the stairs, I'm gonna be able to back out, come around and switch places with my partner. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna get up, as a position, my patient is secure. I'm going to walk around. Now I'm in a position to relieve my partner. And now all I want to do is just make sure that this chair is locked and I am a block from my partner, uh, sorry, from my patient or myself going down the stairs. Now in this position I can show you, if I let go, this is secure. She's not going to go anywhere. So she is now safe and secure until either help arrives or my partner is able to catch their breath or work out a cramp and is able to get back in position and we can safely get to whatever the nearest location is, either going down or up to get to the next platform. If my patient were to code, now in this position, I'm in a position where I can support this head, have them back if I need to ventilate, I can do so. If I need to do chest compressions, I'm in a, I'm in a position to be able to do chest compressions while we go and get equipment or we'll be able to safely transfer to get to a flat location, get them on a long board and move them appropriately. All right, so now either help arrives, my partner's able to come back into position. So they're gonna come in, we're not gonna, I'm, I'm still gonna have contact on this. So now that my partner's in position, I'm gonna come around, get up the stairs and I'm going to, again, I'm getting in position. So I'm gonna keep my patient in between my base. So I'm straddling my patient. So if I needed to, if I was only gonna ventilate, now I'm in a position where I can support the head and I can ventilate with my BVM if I needed to, if that's what this patient needed. If my patient were actively seizing, now I'm gonna be in a position to protect the head and help manage the airway if need be. Okay, until we can get our patient on a flat surface. So what we're going to now is we're going to move the patient up. So we're gonna create some room. So I'm gonna tip her towards you, okay? So I'm gonna to count to three, count to three. One, two, three. All right, now I have room, so I can scoot up. I've got a nice wide base. I'm now able to grab the handles and get myself in position. So I'm gonna now, with my feet, I wanna make sure they're firmly planted on the stair. I don't want them hanging off. I want a good center of gravity. I want a straight back. It's gonna be walked out, tight abdominal muscle. And now we're gonna lift. So I'm gonna count to three. We're gonna go out to three. And let's go up to the top, and, and we're gonna go to the landing. Okay, one, two, three, up, nice and slow. We're gonna hug the wall. I'm going up, I'm going to feel. A heel against the landing, the other foot is going to follow. I'm up on the landing now. You're coming up, okay. wheels are down, we're rolling back. Let me know when those feet are clear. Yeah, I'm going to clear my feet and the patient's feet. Okay, patient's going down, we're secure. 